This one is called the Vela Pulsar, and it's magnificent. It's a thousand light years away. It's a highly magnetized neutron star. You must remember this guy, Louis Giglio, who got very excited two years ago about a chemical called laminin that was in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Or, as I pointed out, a bit like the cross, a sort of wobbly crucifix better suited to the crucifixion of mermaids. But now he's at it again, and I bet you know what Giglio is going to say. Here's a distant gas cloud in our galaxy that looks exactly like our Lord Jesus Christ. Right, Louis? And as it is oscillating, you can see what's happening. It's shooting a radio frequency out of itself. Well, okay, maybe it's not supposed to be a galactic portrait of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I give up. Because when they aimed the radio telescopes at the Vela Pulsar, this is what they heard. Oh, I know, I know. The Vela Pulsar is going to sound like a choir of angels. Right, Louis? Sounds like that, doesn't it, Louis? This is what, from a thousand light years away, the Vela Pulsar sounds like right now. This is it. Listen to this. know about you but I that blew me away I'm thinking wow this is incredible you're like well what does it mean I don't know is that some kind of Morse code for something or what does what, what all that mean I don't know what it means but and I don't want to you know go too crazy here but maybe the Vela Pulsar got wind somehow innately of Psalm 148 verse 3 and says it says praise him sun and moon and all you shining stars we're a shining star we should praise him well how are we going to praise him I know let's oscillate 11 times a second on our axis and see if we can send a radio signal into the universe that would join in the symphony of of God's praise from all creation. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly what happened, Louis. A neutron star was just sitting there with nothing to do after the star it came from exploded and collapsed. And it thought, because it has a brain after all, it thought, according to a psalm I heard on a distant planet, I'm supposed to be singing praises to some deity. With me so far? Now, although this neutron star had a brain and was very smart, it didn't have lungs or a larynx or a mouth. Come on, that would be silly. So through sheer willpower, it made itself start spinning, just like a mountain can't, because it knew that by spinning 11 times a second, it would eject X-rays and gamma rays that would make beautiful music, or at least the sound of a jackhammer. I don't want to, you know, go too crazy here. No, of course not, Louis. I'm glad you've kept this real and haven't ventured into the world of lunatic fantasy. And it's fascinating to learn that choirs like this one are wasting their time because, lovely as these melodic harmonies sound to our ears, God would be just as happy with this. However, there are a few... I said, however, there are a few... There are a few things that make this intelligent pulsar idea kind of implausible anyway. When I say a few, I actually mean about 3,520, but I'll save us both time and give you one. The first thing that defeats this idea that a pulsar is singing from a hymn sheet is the first law of the movie Alien. In space, no one can hear you scream. That's not just a clever tagline, it's a fact of physics. Sound needs a medium in which to propagate because sound waves are compression waves. They have to compress something. So, for example, here's the Mormon Tabernacle Choir singing How Great Thou Art at normal atmospheric pressure. Now, we've sealed the temple around them to make it airtight, so watch what happens as we suck the air out and replicate the vacuum of space. And no, the choir would not explode as they do in sci-fi movies, but just before they pass out and die of asphyxiation, notice how their singing becomes inaudible as less air becomes available to propagate the sound waves. So this pulsar isn't singing the praises of our Lord. Even if you went right up to it, all you'd hear is this. What you're playing to your impressionable audience, Louis, 
are just computer-generated sound waves following the pattern of electromagnetic emissions. And just one other thing I guess I ought to comment on. I didn't realise that not only do stars have a brain, but they can exercise free will as well. They can decide whether to praise God or not praise God, and I guess that means they can decide whether they want to be religious. Maybe there are atheist stars. And if they don't have free will, because according to the Bible only humans have that, then the only alternative is that God deliberately designed these neutron stars to eject charged particles and sing his praises. If so, what an egotistical, self-deluding deity he is. He's a bit like a teenage girl singing in front of a mirror who plays her own fake tape of audience applause every time she finishes a performance. Louis, doesn't your God have better things to do with his time?